In episode three, we talked about plot, and now we're going to talk about plotting. So plotting is where we actually create the sequence of events for the story. People often say that the three parts of a plot are beginning, middle, and end. We uh, handle beginning and end with the story question when it's asked and when it's answered, but what about the middle? Well, the middle is what we can call rising action. Uh, that's what Gustav Freytag called it. So this is where uh, we put our protagonist through a series of struggles and the story gets more and more and more intense and can give us some of our most memorable moments as we go toward the inevitable end. In Little Red Riding Hood begins with her mother giving her a task. Take this basket of goodies to poor sick grandma. So we have our story question. Will Little Red Riding Hood be able to deliver these goodies? Then we get into our rising action. There's initially not too much conflict. It's a long journey over the river and through the woods. But then we have a wolf show up as our antagonist. Uh, he doesn't want these goodies delivered. He wants to eat Little Red Riding Hood. He needles her, finding out where she's going, until he can take a shortcut, arrive first, and eat Grandma whole. Then he lays a trap by dressing in Grandma's nightgown and getting in bed. When Little Red Riding Hood shows up, we get the famous, My, what big ears you have. My, what big teeth you have. This builds more and more tension as our defenseless little girl gets closer and closer, and then snap, the wolf eats her. At least that was the original version. Today we have a watered-down story where Little Red Riding Hood screaming brings over a friendly woodcutter. And he cuts up the wolf. Grandma pops out of his stomach just fine, apparently very good at holding her breath. But originally, this was a tragic tale with a strong moral lesson. Don't talk to strangers, or they'll eat you and your grandma. Story-wise, this makes more sense, too. The woodcutter was never introduced before at all. He just comes out of nowhere. This kind of logical leap is deus ex machina, the famous god out of the machine from ancient plays. Today, it's more like cheating. Don't do that. Instead of having a king or a deity or the cavalry rush in at the last moment and save the day, uh, we want to have a logical story that progresses from our initial story question as the hero goes on step after step through the journey to its inevitable conclusion. So we're going to call these steps plot points. Each plot point uh, is kind of an event that raises the stakes a little bit, maybe shows a ticking clock, uh, or something that can further the logical progression of the story. We need to get the protagonist in the right place at the right time. So I'm using plot points a little bit looser than somebody like famous screenwriter Sid Field would. He describes plot points as those major catastrophes at the end of every act. We'll talk about acts a little bit more when we get to the structure episode, but for right now we're going to focus on building this plot. So for some examples of these plot points, we'll look back at the classic Star Wars once again. Luke Skywalker on his hero's journey, which starts off at, you know, the little sand farm on Tatooine. So to get him to the point where he's blowing up a Death Star and becoming a hero, uh, we've got to get him off the farm. So first he uh, finds out that his little R2 unit has run off. So he pursues him into the desert where he gets attacked by some nomads. Those nomads are driven off by the old wizard of the desert, Ben Kenobi, uh, who turns out to be an old Jedi who knew Luke's father. So now he wants him to go to Alderaan. But Luke can't go to Alderaan. He's needed for the harvest. But then, of course, he finds out that the stormtroopers have tracked him down and uh, killed his aunt and uncle. There's nothing for him on Tatooine anymore. So instead, he's going to follow Ben Kenobi and go to Mos Eisley, where he'll meet a rogue and find a ship, and the story goes on and on. In the info below, I've placed a link to a worksheet you can use to keep your plot and subplot straight. The first page covers the main plot, following the overall story question. First determine where the story begins, when the story question is asked, and where it ends, when the story question is finally answered. Then, list the steps the character needs to take from beginning to end. Make a note in each of them about furthering the story question. How does this event raise the stakes? How does it show the character's deep motivation? If it doesn't, maybe it's something that needs to be cut. Or maybe there needs to be something added to show how the character gets to the right place at the right time. The second page gives a similar list for subplots. What's the story question for the subplot? Where does it begin? And how is it going to end? Along with each of these subplots is a space to make a note about where it stands in the overall plot. You wouldn't want a subplot resolved too early or to linger on. It should fit just right and tie into the events of the main plot. Some of your plot points might include a twist. 
So a twist is something that turns the story completely on its head. Uh, there's a great example of this in the classic fairy tale Cinderella. We've talked about the overall story question of Cinderella. Will she be able to get out of this life of drudgery and misery at the hand of her stepmother and stepsisters? And we, she does get a chance at this, at least for one night, to go to this ball. So it requires several plot points. She's got to make her own dress. Uh, the dress gets torn apart when her stepsisters find out she borrowed it, quote unquote, from their trash. And then we meet the fairy godmother, who allows her to go to the ball. So that's a pretty interesting story, and it could have ended right there. What if Cinderella had danced with the prince, they fell in love, happy life forever, the end. It'd still be a pretty good story, but it's much better of a story to have this twist that the magic runs out at midnight. So now Cinderella's running off, she doesn't want to be embarrassed by being reduced to rags, and the prince kind of takes over as a protagonist of a new subplot where he's trying to find this girl in his kingdom that she, he only knows her shoe size. So, Cinderella's perspective, she's, you know, have a, had a good night, so she's kind of writing that, but then eventually the prince does show up, and after this whole new series of plot points with her stepmother breaking the glass shoe and Cinderella having the other, uh, it finally works out, and we get a really massive catharsis with her overcoming even the last little bit of scheming. It's a great story that'll last for all time. Through our story, we've had these plot points building up the tension higher and higher and higher, raising those stakes until finally we get to the end, or as Freytag would call it, the climax. So this is when the story question is answered in a dramatic fashion. So for the movie Predator, uh, this is when the girl in question has finally gets to the choppa, uh, even though Arnold Schwarzenegger gets nuked by an alien. Uh, or in the video game Super Mario Brothers, this is when Bowser's finally defeated, and it turns out that Princess Toadstool's at last in this castle. Uh, or in Pride and Prejudice, this is where Mr. Darcy once again confesses his love and offers to marry, uh, overcoming his overbearing aunt. And then the story's done. Uh, that's it. Uh, the story question that we've posed has been answered, and anything going on is kind of excess. However, there can be some stuff that we need to talk about. And this is where we go into the resolution, or the denouement. The denouement is a series of scenes, or even a singular scene, in which all of the final subplots are tied up. A lot of stories end, and then they live happily ever after, but maybe we need a picture of what that ever after is. Once the story's resolved, we can see how their normalcy works, and have this kind of final emotional tie to our characters. However, you don't want to keep the story going too far. Denouement and all of these little pieces of resolution are kind of like a fine spice. You don't want to oversaturate it or you're going to ruin the pot. And your story will leave the reader, instead of wanting more, saying, why did we have that last chapter? Always leave your readers wanting more. They followed these characters on an emotional journey and become very detached to them, but now we've reached the last page. So, if they want more, I guess they could turn back to page one, or if there's a sequel coming, they can wait for that. But as is, the story's going to live on within them. And an effective plot can give these events and moments of memory that are going to keep people saying, hey, remember when that awesome thing happened? And that's the power of a plot in a story. That's it for episode 3.1 of Storycrafting. Writers, keep writing.